Welcome to Social Studies at the Center. Today we are talking about the Revolutionary War. Now, as a lot of you may know, the Revolutionary War was fought between Britain and the North American British colonies. There were a lot of reasons for this war, but the most famous reason is that the colonies were unhappy with the fact that they didn't have any representation in Parliament in regards to taxes. A really famous slogan comes from this, and it's, no taxation without representation. You might recognize that one. Anyway, this was, war was fought um, between 1775 and 1783. There were a lot of famous people that we now know because of this war, like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Um, and there were also a lot of famous quotes, and I'm going to read a couple of these, okay? So one of them, I already said the taxation one, that's pretty famous. Another one is, the shot heard around the world. Um, we also have, give me liberty or give me death. You probably know that one, that's pretty famous. And then this last one is, I regret that I have but one life to give to my country. That's such a beautiful quote, and that one was actually given by someone that we're going to learn about today as we discover more about the Revolutionary War and the Culver Spiring. Hi, I'm Mrs. Mertz. And I'm Ms. Moyo. And today, we're going to be learning about spies. Did you know that there were spies during the Revolutionary War? I think I've heard of it. I think I've heard of a guy named Nathan Hale. Nathan. Was he a spy? I think he was. Let's learn a little bit about him. So Nathan Hale was a 21-year-old man, and he was a commander of the Continental Army. And one day, George Washington, the whole leader of the Revolutionary War, said he needed someone to do an important and dangerous mission. Nathan Hale stood up and said, I can do that mission. And George Washington said, I need you to go and spy on the British soldiers, and you need to tell me what they're doing. And Nathan Hale said, I can do that, and decided to be a spy. Yeah, and so when he decided to be a spy, he signed up for a very dangerous dangerous mission, just like Mrs. Mertz said. And so when he went over to the British side, he followed them around and collected this important and vital information in order to win the, the Revolutionary War. And so Nathan Hale, um, when he was following these, the British people around, and while they were, he was with the British people, the British people actually invaded this island called Manhattan. And um, when they invaded this land, someone had set this, this, this island and this place on fire. And the British people thought, you know, it could have been someone that was against them, the patriots that they were fighting against. And so when the, when the land was on fire, they were looking for people who could have done this, the patriots, anybody who could have set this, this place on fire. And so Nathan Hale, during this time, he wanted to travel back to American territory. And so he was sailing by boat uh, across the Long Island Sound. But unfortunately, uh, the British people saw Nathan Hale and they thought he looked a little suspicious that he could have been someone that lit the place on fire. And so they took him into custody and they wanted to see if he was anybody of suspect. Yeah, so the British side started to um, ask him questions and they started to interrogate him. So they were trying to get information out of Nathan Hill. And while they were interrogating him, they found some secret documents of the British on Nathan Hill. So that's when they decided to unfortunately execute Nathan Hill and hang him. And when George Washington found out what happened to Nathan Hill, he knew that something needed to change. So he decided that he needed more well-trained spies who could use coded messages, ciphers, and different ways of communication to help get information on the British. So George Washington got these well-trained spies to help them win the war. And today we're going to be learning about a couple of these real Revolutionary War spies. This is the Culper Codebook. The Culper Codebook was created and used by the Culper Spy Ring to compose and send coded messages to George Washington's headquarters during the Revolutionary War. And under the orders of General George Washington, Major Benjamin Talmadge organized the Culper Spy Ring in 1778 to gather information on British 
troops um, and the different things that they were doing in um, a New York area during that time. Yeah. And informants used fake names and a numerical code composing of 763 numbers representing words, names, places to communicate their information. That's a lot. It is a lot. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And so I guess what we're going to be doing now is we want you guys to figure out this code that we've created, okay? So we are going to just share a screen with you. And we have this coded message we want you to figure out. We've also listed some of the letters that are used in the Culper Code. So go ahead and pause this video just for a moment so that you can try and figure out what it is. All right. So from that coded message, you probably figured out that it is actually a name. And that name is Anna Strong. Anna Strong was actually one of the people who were a part of the Culper spy ring. She was the only woman who was a part of the Culper spy ring. And she was able to help a lot in this, this revolutionary war. And one of those ways was by hanging laundry. Yep, and who would ever expect a lady to be a spy, let alone by doing laundry? I know I wouldn't be suspicious or anything like that. So how she sent these coded messages was she would use handkerchiefs and a black penny coat. So when the message was ready, she would place a black penny coat, which is the black towel, mm -hmm. um, to represent that the message is ready. And so she normally would have six handkerchiefs total, and yeah. each of those handkerchiefs represented a different fort. And so when she'd hang up three handkerchiefs, that would mean that the hidden code, the message, was in a box in the third fort. And so the whaler from this from the water would be able to see that the message is ready by seeing the black penny coat hung on the clothing line. Exactly. And one thing to remember is that Anna Strong was never caught. Nobody knew that she was a spy and nobody ever figured out that messages were being sent back and forth. And she really helped in our Revolutionary War um, in our actually winning that war. So yeah, that was a great success. So we're going to figure out our spy's name by figuring out this word jumble. So we have an anagram of his name that got all jumbled up and we're going to get you to pause the screen and figure out what his name could be. So you might have figured out his name is actually Robert. Yep. Robert, he was a spy, just like all the other ones in the, the Culper spy ring during the Revolutionary War. And he had a couple different spy names. One of them was Samuel Culper Jr. And another one was 723. Now, Robert had a pretty sound strategy when it came to his spy craft. He went to a lot of coffee shops in New York, and he also owned a coffee shop. And at these coffee shops, he would paint himself out to be a huge loyalist. He was trying to make it seem like he was for the king and he was for the colonies staying uh, to be British colonies. Um, and he did this because he wanted the, uh, the, all the other fellow loyalists or maybe even the British soldiers to put their guard down with him and that let him either overhear information that was really useful, or maybe sometimes they even told him information because they were like, oh, this guy is with us. He's a good guy. He's, he can know like of our plans, you know? But because of this, Robert was able to find a lot of good information he was able to pass on to this other people in his spy ring. Some of those, or one of them could have been Abraham Woodhull, who was actually another famous spy who recruited Robert in the first place. That's true. And Robert was actually very secretive. He didn't even want George Washington to know his real name, mm -hmm. but he helped stop one of the biggest plots the British were pulling. They wanted to flood the American market with counterfeit money. Counterfeit is fake money, and that would have completely destroyed the economy, but he was able to tell people and stop it. Yeah, thankfully. Mm -hmm. But you know what I've realized? We don't even know his last name yet. We just know it's Robert. Oh. Yeah, but I have this blank piece of paper right here. I'm thinking there might be a message on it, like maybe with invisible ink. So I'm going to go at it with this crayon mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what it says after, okay? I have a recipe for invisible ink. So here's our recipe. For invisible ink, you're going to need one teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of water. So one part salt to two parts water. And you're going to boil the water. And once your water is boiling, you're going to add the salt and stir it until the salt's dissolved. After that, you can take it off the heat and you can use a Q-tip or a toothpick and start writing. What does right. it say? I have my message. 
you might be able to see it's a little hard if you over the camera, but right there is definitely a T. It says Townsend. His name is Robert Townsend. Hi, everyone. So the last spy that we're going to learn about is Abraham Woodhull. Okay, we can just like restart. I don't know what's going on, sorry. Restart. <laughs> yes. Okay. No, yeah, what's this? Yeah, okay. okay. Hi everyone. So the last spy who we're going to learn about, his name is Abraham Woodhull. All right. So Abraham Woodhull, just like you said, is another spy of the American Revolution. He helped deliver messages to George Washington. He was born in 1750, but he died in 1826. And he was a patriot or one who fought for the Americans and the American Revolution. Um, and he's also a member of the Culper Spiring, which was this group that also helped um, uh, de deliver important messages to George Washington to help them win the Revolutionary War. So one important way that he helped get information across was by leaving things in his yard. So this is a picture of his house. And Abraham would leave maybe clues or um, objects in his yard that people would go and find. So I don't know exactly where he would leave these things, but maybe he left them hidden behind a tree or under a fence post. I'm sure the places he put these objects were hidden very well. And people would come and pick up what he left in his backyard and move that information to somewhere else. So unfortunately, his house burned down in 1931, um, and this is what we have left is of um, his house is this memorial site. And um, even though it burned down, we still know a lot about him, and he helped contribute a lot to the American Revolutionary War. Mm. Yeah, and so just like how Abraham Woodhull, one of his methods was hiding things in his yard to help deliver these important messages. And so another method we wanted to talk about was the masking spy method. So Abraham Woodhull, he didn't necessarily use this method, but this is just another method that some spies had used um, to help deliver crucial and important um, notes and, and messages. And so here we have like a letter someone has written to someone and it's this is, it just looks like a normal letter, normal message, um, but the masking part comes in is when you get another piece of paper and there's a shape cut into it. And so, this is where the shape will outline what the real message is. And what's that real message? This, so the real message says, British troops coming to stay in Valley Forge, September 18th, prepare for attack. So this regular looking letter actually shows a more um, secret hidden message on how to plan for something. And the people, when they got this letter, now knew that they needed to plan for an attack that was coming in Valley Forge. And this is just one way that um, during the Revolutionary War that people would get um, messages across to people. We've had so much fun learning about Revolutionary War spies with you today. And we have a mission for you. On this screen, you'll see a coded message. And we want to see if you can decipher this code. Yeah, and you can decipher this code by going to this website right here. And this is called the Culper Code Book. This is the same code book that the Culper Spiring used back in the American Revolution times. And in order to solve this, there's numbers here and letters or words here. And just to show you an example, we'll solve the first, first word for you. And it's number 72. So we're going to go back to the Culper code book and we're going to go to number 72. So this word or this number actually represents the word British. So we'll let you solve the rest of the puzzle here. And once you solve our coded message, can you go back in the video and find out where we said this exact same phrase? So thanks so much for learning with us today. Yes. All right. <laughs>